Hey there, Facebook. Prophet David Taylor here. How's everybody doing? Oh, wait, sorry, not on the screen. Good to see everybody. Welcome to my Periscope audience. Welcome to my Facebook audience. Make sure everybody can see me there. All right, let me pull up something else I need to pull up here, and we're going to dive right in. All right? Now, I want to stay off, say uh, right off the bat, you know that I always have a lot to say uh, during my prophetic broadcast, so I highly recommend, God bless you, Anna, I highly recommend that you watch the replay because you might not be able to get everything that comes through the first time. So again, I highly recommend that you watch uh, the replay, okay? All right, so let's start off with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercy. God, I ask you to be in the midst of this broadcast, oh God, and have your way. I surrender, oh God, is about what you have to say, for you are love and you are our life, and we have no life apart from you. So have your way in this broadcast right now, uh, that you might be glorified, that the body of Christ might be edified, and that the demons might be terrified. And we thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to start off with my tagline. What's my tagline? My tagline is that God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. <laughs> One more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. All right. Uh, so again, uh, welcome to my Facebook Live Periscope audience. Please like and share whenever God gives a prophetic gift. Prophetic gifts are designed to change lives and many times change nations. So, you know, I want the word of God to go forth and for as many people that can see it to see it. So please like and share uh, this video on as many channels as you can. Uh, if you want to support me, uh, you want to sow to my ministry, Matthew 1041 says that if you receive a prophet, because he is a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. So just like God rewards the prophets, one of the main things he gives us is vision. God will give you that too if you sow into any prophet's ministry. So uh, I have a PayPal.me link on my Facebook Live and Periscope profile. And then I'm, I have an Amazon Smile link. Smile link, excuse me. But I'm going to get some apps. Someone told me that I need to upgrade and get some apps to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to do that really soon. But I will let you know about that too. Now, how to find me, I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT, Prophet David Taylor, that's what that stands for, PDT, hashtag PDT, that's the way to look me up or find me anywhere online. I'm live on Facebook Periscope this time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and then this Thursday coming up is the second Thursday of the month. On second Thursdays, I do something called No More Genies, where we address and get rid of our genie concept of God, where we, we think God is a genie, where we think God is magic, okay? That second Thursday, so that's coming up this Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m., again, on Facebook and Periscope, okay? All right, so let's dive right into our prophetic word and our prophetic teaching for the day. I'm trying to get my camera where it needs to be. Sorry about that, uh, Periscope. All right, so... <clears throat> Our prophetic word for today is every bit whole. Every bit whole. Okay? So what does that mean and what does that refer to? Well, first let me release a prophetic word that the Lord gave me this morning, and then we'll dive into that, and then we'll look at the scripture. Okay? Here's a prophetic word that the Lord gave me this morning. For thus saith the Lord, for behold my people, my desire is for your desire. I want you to come into my presence because you want to be there. I want you to come into my presence because you want to spend time with me, not rushing in and out of my presence. And as you come into my presence with desire, then the sun of righteousness will arise with healing in my wings. Because I want you every bit whole. I want you whole spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, socially, vocationally, and financially. For when the world looks at my children, if they can't see wholeness in you, then why would they believe in me? Therefore, I release unto you, my people, a spirit of intimacy. I release unto you, my people, a spirit of desire. I release unto you, my people, a spirit of wholeness and healing, 
so that you may know that if you belong to me, you're not supposed to be crippled. You're not supposed to be crippled in your body. You're not supposed to be crippled in your finances. You're not supposed to be crippled in your mind. You're not supposed to be crippled in your soul and your emotions, having low self-esteem and being afraid to love. So therefore, my people, come unto me, spend time with me, with desire to spend time with me, and I will make you every whit whole, says the Spirit of the living God. All right, so let's dive into that. <clears throat> First thing that the Lord said was, is that his desire is for our desire. Well, what does that mean? That means that God wants you to spend time with him because you want to, not because you have to. Have you ever been talking to somebody and they just stay on their phone and you can't halfway have the conversation because they just, they always got their head down, they're not paying attention to you? Have you ever talked to somebody and they steady looking past you? They're always distracted by everything. They're not giving you their full attention. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel like uh, they don't really want to be bothered with you. <laughs> it makes you feel like they'd rather be somewhere else. Well, we do the same thing to God. <coughs> Excuse me. We do the same thing to the Lord. We rush into his presence. We ask for a bunch of things. We rush back out. We're not spending time with God sometimes because we want to. And God's desire is for our desire. And what that means is that God wants us to spend time with him because we want to be there, not because we have to be there. Okay? Not out of obligation. Is that the way you want your friends to spend time with you? Because they feel like they have to or because they want to? Can you see the difference? Okay? So God's desire is for our desire. But then he says, when we come with him with a desire to spend time with him, what will happen is you won't be rushing. You won't be rushing in and out of his presence. You'll be happy to be in his presence. And when you spend time with the Lord, what happens is that the sun of righteousness arises. Now, what does that mean in a practical sense? In a practical sense, it means that God's glory, God's love, God's light begins to shine on you. Okay, uh, that happened to Moses so strong in the Bible until Moses' face began to glow. And his face began to glow so brightly until he had to wear a veil because the people couldn't look at him anymore. See, if you want God's glory and God's, God's love and all that to, to be a part of you, you have to spend time with him just like you spend time with anybody else. If you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife, don't you want to spend time with them? Don't they want you to spend time with them? But here's the key. They want you to want to be with them. Because whenever you make your husband or your wife feel like, I'd rather be somewhere else, after a while, they'd be just like, forget it. Because they don't want you to give it to them out of obligation. That's the difference between religion and relationship. Do you feel obligated to spend time with the Lord like you have to because you're a Christian? Or do you spend time with the Lord because you want to, because you love him? Because there are so many good things that come in being around him. See, if you spend time with God because you want to, you won't be rushing. And the more time you spend in his presence, then he just breathes on you. He just breathes on you. He just unleashes his glory and his love and his light on you. And then the son of righteousness arises with healing in his wings. I'm going to show you that scripture in a minute. Okay? But let's finish with the prophetic word. Because God says he wants us to be whole in every way. Now, there are seven foundations to your life. Let me make sure I'm holding my fingers up so you can see it. There are seven foundations to your life. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, vocational, social, and financial. Oops, counted that wrong. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, social, vocational, financial. Okay, seven foundations. Now, some of y'all have never heard that before, but that's your whole life. That's your whole life, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, social, vocational. Vocation is what you do for a living, your, your career, and financial, your money. Seven foundations to your life. What God says is that he wants us whole in every area. He wants you whole spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, socially in your relationships, in your career, in your finances. God wants you 100% whole. That's what every bit whole means. Okay, that's what one of the translations of the word shalom means. Nothing broken, nothing missing. It just uh, Shalom does not just mean peace. It means wholeness. Okay, but not only that, but then the Spirit of God had me release 
a spirit of desire, release a spirit of intimacy, and release a spirit of healing. Do you know why? Because if you are a Christian, you are not supposed to stay broken. You are not supposed to be crippled. You might have come to Jesus crippled, but you ain't supposed to stay crippled if you're a believer. You ain't supposed to stay crippled in your body. Your body is supposed to be healthy and whole with no diseases and no premature death. You're not supposed to stay crippled in your mind. You're not supposed to have mental disease or depression or, or continual negative thoughts. I'm not talking about, you know, having an off moment or I'm talking about in a spirit of depression where you don't even want to get out of bed. You're not supposed to be crippled emotionally where you have low self-esteem or you're too afraid to love someone. You're not supposed to be crippled financially to where you don't have enough money to give birth to your dreams. You're not supposed to be crippled socially, meaning that you're not bound up in the wrong relationships because the wrong relationships with the wrong people will mess your life up. That's bondage. Okay? You are not, if you are a Christian, you are not supposed to be crippled or broken in any way. You may have come to Jesus crippled or broken, but you're not supposed to stay crippled or broken. Okay? And that healing comes from spending time with God. And if you are spending time with God because you want to, you won't be in a hurry. The same way you are when you're spending time with somebody else that you love. You follow all that? Now, <clears throat> let's look at the scripture. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Okay? Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. So we got the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's how the Bible is divided. 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament, okay? Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament, uh, and Malachi was a minor prophet. And remember, minor prophet just means that their books were smaller, not that their message was less important. Major prophet means that their books were very long, not that their message was more important, okay? So Malachi 4.2 says, But for you who fear my name... The sun, S-U-N, like the big ball of light in the sky. The sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And you will go out and leap like calves from the stall. Okay. So God says when we fear him. Now you have to read the verse above it to kind of understand the contrast that the Lord is making. But he's talking about people that, that love him, people that respect God. And people that want to be in his presence. It says the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Did you know that just staying in God's presence many times can heal you? Did you know uh, there have been testimonies of people that have said they spent more time reading their Bible and their eyes got healed. Of like cataracts and glaucoma and like near nearsightedness and farsightedness. I kid you not. Just from reading the word. Seriously. Okay, so see, when you spend time with God, then again, the son of righteousness, now that word there is S-U-N. So it's talking about analogous to the big ball of light in the sky that we see rise every day, rise in the east and set in the west. There's healing in the wings, the son of righteousness. <clears throat> now, a lot of people have interpreted that as another metaphor for Jesus, son of righteousness, which is entirely apropos. But the point is, that when you spend time around the Lord, there is healing. Healing, that's what you need to understand, okay? That's the point of today's prophetic message, that you are supposed to be every bit whole. And if you've been living with anything that's chronic, I stop by to tell you that's not the will of God. Chronic depression on your mind, that's not the will of God. If you've been saved a long time, but you don't know your Bible, that means you are still biblically ignorant, you are still unskilled, in rightly dividing the word of truth, you are still unskilled in using the word of God. That's not the will of God. If you have any kind of type of chronic illness in your body that you're dealing with over and over and over again, that's not the will of God. Okay? If you have chronic brokenness in your soul, if you're sad all the time, if you're down on yourself all the time, if you feel lonely all the time, if you feel suicidal all the time, that kind of brokenness is not the will of God. Okay? Uh, socially, if you got bad relationships, if you are surrounded by people that are seriously just holding you back, that's not the will of God, okay? Financially, and also vocationally, meaning you're supposed to be, see, God does not call you to a job. God calls you to your purpose. Let me say that one more time. God does not call you to a job. 
God calls you to your purpose. Did you know that? And when you spend time with the Lord, the Lord will begin to show you what your purpose is. The Lord will begin to show you why he created you. And that's what you're supposed to do with your life. I know why God created me. Okay, God put words in me. So I'm a prophet. I'm a playwright. I'm a teacher. I'm an author. I'm a songwriter. I'm a music producer. All of them is words. Okay, because that's why God made me. That's why that's in me. That's why that's what I do. Because God has called me to purpose, not necessarily a job. A job is a means to an end. But you're supposed to be doing your purpose. And if you are not living your purpose, you are outside the will of God. Because God has not called you to a job. God has called you to the reason you were born. And that's the way you heal your career. You're supposed to build your career around your purpose, around what you were created to do. Okay? And then financially. If you're crippled financially, man, every month, every week, every day is a struggle. How are you going to eat? How are you going to uh, pay your bills? How are you going to get transportation around town? How are you going to build anything without money? You see what I mean? And so God wants us to be every bit whole. God wants us to be whole in every area. And I've discovered for a lot of Christians that that is news to them. That's why I teach so hard on genie concept. Because I've discovered that a lot, a lot of Christians believe that they somehow they're supposed to be sick. That somehow... It makes you more humble when you're sick. That's not true. Or that somehow they're supposed to be broke. That's not true. Or here's a big one. You hear me talk about it all the time. If you're married to the wrong person. God ain't never meant for you to be married to the wrong person. And some people have been struggling a 10 and a 20 and a 30 years in a bad marriage. God never meant for you to have that bad marriage. Some people have family members that have held you back your whole life. Some people, uh, you're related to people to where like every time you're around them, they got something bad to say. They got something negative to say. That is not from God. That's crippling you. So again, what the prophetic word is for today and what the scripture we read, Malachi 4.2 shows us, is that God wants to open up his light like the sun, like sunlight, his glory and his love on you and heal you, heal you at every level. Now, I must warn you, that means, in no uncertain terms, there's some stuff you're going to have to let go. For example, <clears throat> one of the games, one of the mind games we play with ourselves is that we beat ourselves up for the past. You're going to have to let that go. If you want to get healed in your mind, Jesus Christ is coming in your life with forgiveness. And you're going to have to learn how to receive his forgiveness and forgive yourself in your mind and in your soul. That's the only way you're ever going to be whole mentally and emotionally, okay? Uh, for example, sometimes if you want wholeness in your body, most of the time you got to change your diet and your exercise. Most of the time you got to eat better and you got to work out, okay, if you want physical wholeness in your body. If you want wholeness in your finances, you're going to have to ask God, what is his financial plan for your life? Many times, I know you've heard many times from religious people to sow a seed, to give your tithes, give your offerings. Yes, that's correct, and yes, that's biblical, but that's just the beginning of the process to changing your finances. Changing your finances, getting into the kinds of money that God wants you to have, has everything to do with being in the will of God and doing what you were born to do. That's how your money is going to come. I know you want manna. I know you want it to just fall out the sky, but it doesn't work that way. Okay, do you see what I'm saying? And so I've discovered in my travels and in my journeys that there are a whole bunch of Christians that think that somehow God gets glory out of you being broken. That is a lie. If you're married and you're fighting with your husband and wife all the time, do you think that gives God glory? If your body is broken, you've got chronic, chronic illness, chronic sickness, chronic disease, and you feel like a prisoner in your own body, do you think that gives God glory? If you are not mentally and emotionally strong, but you're broken, you're down on yourself, you won't forgive yourself, do you think that gives uh, God glory? Jesus was beat up so that you don't have to beat up on yourself. Did you know that? So I want to encourage you today that if you have heard any religious message in your life that has ever told you that being broken is from God, 
That is incorrect because we just read the scripture where the Lord said the son of righteousness is going to rise with healing in his wings. God wants you 100% whole. Okay? And the only way you're going to get that wholeness is to spend time with him. All right? All right. <clears throat> so, if you got any prayer requests for me, put them on the screen. Um, let me see if the Holy Spirit is leading me to anything in particular. But if there's anything you want me to pray for, put it on the screen now. Okay, the Spirit of God is saying somebody out there has AIDS. You have AIDS, okay? If you're watching me right now and you've got AIDS, put your hand on the screen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by his stripes you are healed. I command your body to be every whit whole, and I command the AIDS to leave. And the next time you go to the doctor, you are going to get a healthy report, okay? And there's going to be no trace of AIDS in your system, and it's going to be a miracle. And when people ask you, how did you get cured, you say, I got cured by Jesus Christ. I got cured in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because by his stripes, you are healed. Okay? Yes, okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me there's some women out there looking at me right now that you haven't been able to get pregnant. Put your hands on the screen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I give you an impartation for the season of life. God has been trying to get your attention because he wants to send certain children through your womb, just like Hannah in the Bible. And when you let the Lord have your attention and you promise that you will raise your children, the way that God wants you to raise your children, he will open up that womb and give you the fruit of the womb and give you the children that you desire. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right now I impart to you women that have been trying to conceive an impartation for life and fertility in obedience to the will of God. Ask God, who is it, God, that you want me to carry in my womb and how do you want me to raise them? And when, like Hannah, you make up your mind to be obedient to the will of God, then God will bless that womb and open it up and bless it with fruit and children. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. See, it's the power of God. The power of God is what makes a difference. How would I know that stuff? I don't know. I'm just a man just like you. The Holy Ghost knows. See, and it's the power of God that can heal you and, and heal your body of AIDS and heal you of a barren womb. Okay? Okay, we're going to uh, move it on if there's any unclean spirits that need to be cast out. Mm. God said, ignorance, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, I cast out the spirit of ignorance. There's a spirit of ignorance that's been in your ear telling you that you ain't supposed to know nothing, that you ain't supposed to learn, that you're not supposed to grow, that education isn't for people like me. That's a demon. That's the devil, because that's not true. Because the Bible said if you lack wisdom, you can ask God. He will give to all men liberally. The Bible says in all thy getting, get understanding. Okay, the Bible says in Luke 2.22 that Jesus grew, that the Lord grew. When he became a man, he grew. So if God increased, what in the world makes you think you're not supposed to increase in knowledge? Okay, so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus Christ. So that spirit of ignorance that's been plaguing you, telling you you can't go back to school, telling you that you can't learn, you can't learn anymore, or that you're too old, or that it's too late. In the name of Jesus, I cast that demon out. And you'll feel it break off you. You'll feel it break off your head. Okay? And if you want to practice self-deliverance, let me show you how to do that. Just put your hand on your head and say, in the name of Jesus, I cast out the spirit of ignorance. And you'll feel it break off. Okay, and you'll be able to learn and you'll be able to make it through school fine. All right. All right. Let me see if there's anything else the Spirit of God wants to do. All right. Okay, so did I get any prayer requests? Okay, no prayer requests on the screen. All right. All right, then God bless you. Remember, our message this week was every bit whole. God wants you whole in every area. Now, this Thursday, I will be on live at 7 o'clock p.m. to do my No More Genies broadcast for December. This broadcast will be part two. What I did last month in November was called 
what if I'm angry with God, part one, okay? So we identify many of the ways that we get angry with God in life. This Thursday at 7 p.m., I'm going to be doing part two of what if I'm angry with God, part two. And what I'm going to do in part two is show you how to work through each one of the things that we identified in part one. So all the things that we identified in part one, when this Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm going to show you how to work through them in part two so you can go from wherever you are with your anger with God to a healthy relationship with God full of faith and love and joy. Because it doesn't do us any good just to identify the anger. We have to be able to work through the anger to get back to love, back to joy, and back to faith in God. So that's what I'm going to be talking about this Thursday. Okay? 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time right here on Facebook Live or Periscope. And then also my Periscope link is posted on my Twitter. You can also check out my YouTube channel for the replay if you didn't get a chance to see it live. Okay? So remember, like I told you, please like and share this broadcast. Uh, please sign up for my email list. That's on my Facebook Live page. And there's a link on my Twitter as well so that when new material drops, I have some new things I'm preparing for 2019. There's no spam on my alert list because I hate spam, so I don't get people spam. But when I have some new ministry materials dropping, like I'm working on a devotional, I have my teaching on, uh, on the fivefold ministry, stuff like that. I'll alert you when that stuff is available, okay? All right, thank you so much. God bless you. I hope you have a good Sunday and a good rest of your week. I hope you keep it in your mind for the rest of your day and your week that you're supposed to be whole. Say that with me. I'm supposed to be whole if I'm a Christian. Say it with me. I'm supposed to be whole if I'm a Christian. One more time. I'm supposed to be whole if I'm a Christian. Meditate on that. Let that stay in your head and let the Lord, amen, God bless you, Anna, and let the Lord bless you this week as you spend time with him and he brings wholeness in your life. All right? Amen. God bless you. I'll see you this Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time.